a number of occasions, sat down with my whole family. I said, you guys know all I want to do is honor Jesus. All I want to do, everything with my life, is simply to bring Jesus glory. If you see anything that is not consistent with that, I'm not just giving you permission to point it out. I'm asking you to point it out. Well, hey there. Welcome back. Glad, uh, So glad that you're joining us. Um, have you thought at all about last week? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I don't want to spend a lot of time there, but there's one thought or one point that I think would be worth making, and that is it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. If you remember from last week, we talked about all of us have different areas, like maybe you're a school teacher, you have that way of your life, you may be in charge of a committee, you may be a, uh, in charge of a neighborhood group, you have all these different responsibilities in life. And what the challenge is for us is to recognize God in that assignment, but then come to experience Him in that assignment. And here's the point I wanted to make. It explains to me why sometimes you'll have a guy uh, that will be a, a genius in business and really represent the Lord well. He'll uh, be generous. He'll be kind. He'll uh, only do business that's a win-win situation so that everybody involved uh, prospers, the business that they buy from, the people they sell to. So it's a win-win. So godly in that sense. And so you find this a businessman who has come to know the Lord as a steward of resource and ideas and people, but he never came to know the Lord as husband or maybe father. And so his home life sometimes is really a mess. And it's not because, it's not because he uh, doesn't know the Lord. It's just literally he's never come to know the Lord in that way that would influence his life to represent Jesus well in that part of his life. Here's the invitation. I throw it out again. Every one of us can come to know Jesus experientially. That means the encounter with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ experientially in such a way that he impacts the course of our life and the success, and that is a biblical term, the success of that direction in our life. All right, now let's go to chapter uh, four of Proverbs. And I had a friend, oh goodness, this would be, um, it, was, it was a few months before I was married and I've been married 48 years. So it was, it, was actually, it was actually about 49 years ago. I had a friend come to me and he said, Bill, I wanna share this verse with you. It's, it's like one of the most important verses of my life. And it's in Proverbs 4, 23. Just take a look at it. It says, keep your heart, or the, the translation I learned it in, watch over your heart with all diligence because from it flows the issues of life. And as soon as he shared that with me, it from literally from that day, I believe it was a December, a December of 1972. He shared that verse with me, and it so pierced me that it has shaped my thinking, my values ever since then. Watch over your heart. I don't believe that's an invitation to be introspective, because I know for me, introspection just really cost me a lot, hurt me a lot. Because I, you know, I, I've never met anybody that went deep inside, soul searching, and came out encouraged. I mean, I've never met anybody that came out saying, "Wow, wait till you see what I found." You know, it doesn't happen that way. We go soul searching, we find problems. So I don't think it's that. I don't think the Lord is inviting us to that kind of a navel gazing approach to life. But what it is is it's it's an alarm that says, "Watch over your heart," because attitudes and values come out of that place of your heart. And if you see uh, uh, impatience, you see uh, certain things that are not right, they suddenly become appealing, where there's an appetite for something that's not right, not healthy. As soon as those things begin to just take any form or shape, immediately they have to be repented of and dealt with, immediately. We used to do this with our children. We, um, our, our discipline in our home in raising our kids as we discipline based on attitude, we based, we based it on, on heart. And uh, that way we actually prevented a lot of bad conduct. We would see something develop of impatience or uh, bitterness or you know whatever, just the stuff that you go through as, as, as people. And uh, we would see that in a child and we'd say, all right, son, go to your room. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to take care of that. And they would learn over time that they had to really 
they weren't controlled by the people around them, but they had mastery, if you will, mastery over their own hearts. And that was something that we required of them uh, just in growing up and had to learn it ourselves. I actually, uh, a number of occasions, sat down with my whole family. I said, you guys know all I want to do is honor Jesus. All I want to do, everything with my life, is simply to bring Jesus glory. If you see anything that is not consistent with that, I'm not just giving you permission to point it out. I'm asking you to point it out, address it. Even my children, I did that. Now, obviously, they still have to maintain respect. All the other parts of protocol for family, you figure that out in your own home. But for me, there were times I, I remember uh, this uh, guy that almost, uh, almost hit us with his car, and I, I laid into my horn. I was very, very angry with him. And later, we pulled over the family. I said, guys, I am so sorry. I, I responded outside of, uh, of the character of Christ. Now I don't remember how I, how I worded it. I just, I turned to them. I said, I was so wrong. And I remember Eric, my oldest son, he says, yeah, dad, you were really wrong. That was wrong. And, and, and I couldn't get mad at him because I actually invited him to do that. I want, I want people around me to say, um, it feels like you're getting careless here. It feels like you should pay more attention there. What is that? It's watching over the heart. Why? Because everything in your life flows out of that one place. That one place. The heart is the seat of affection. Listen to this. Out of the heart, man believes. So the heart is the place where faith is nurtured and developed. All the things that are, are valuable to us, the love of God, God flows to us and through us, from our own hearts to humanity around us. Everything about our life that is of great significance is connected to the heart. And so it's really vital that when you, when you see, uh, um, you, you taste salt water coming out of that part of your life, you go, oh, that's not right. That's not right. That's, that, that has a tinge of resentment or, or sarcasm or whatever it might be. That's not good. I've got to make sure to clean that up. So we get before the Lord, we repent, repent deeply. We're going to wrap it up with just a couple more verses here. <clears throat> it says um, in verse uh, 22, it says, for they are life. These are the words of, of God, the words of wisdom. They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Here's what I want to do. I want to throw something out that I'm going to cover more thoroughly in weeks to come. Wisdom by nature has divine health attached to it. Wisdom by nature has abundance attached to it. There are certain things that they, it's almost like they come with the package. It's in the design of those who reign in life to have the resources they need to accomplish their purpose and to be radically generous to affect the people around them. Wisdom has with it the attachment of a divine health, a way of approaching life that keeps us in a place of physical strength, emotional, mental strength. So I pray that for you. I pray that, that uh, every one of us would get to not just explore, but actually delight in and enjoy in the coming uh, weeks and months the uh, manifestation of wisdom as it affects health, as it affects our finances, as it affects our family life, our relationships, that every one of us would see the beautiful fruit of reigning in life. I pray that over you right now in Jesus' name. I bless you with that. Amen, amen. Next week, we're going to uh, take a look at uh, a very interesting verse out of Proverbs 5 and this whole concept of, of the purpose of the community. That's what we'll look at next. Join us.